In this video, I'm going to discuss about radioactivity theory of on mountain building. So this theory was postulated by Jolly in 1925. So he wrote a book called Surface of the Surface History of the Earth. So in which he wrote about this theory. This theory is based on radioactivity of certain elements in substratum. This theory is also known as thermal cycle theory or the theory of the surface of the earth. The objective of this theory is to explain about the thermal history of the earth and explain mathematically about the interior of the earth and problems of mountain building and continental drift. In this theory, the orogenetic force derived from radioactivity, so which causes when the disintegration of radioactive elements causes heat and this production of heat makes those materials which are there in the substratum to expand and when this radioactivity is poor there is cooling so because of the cooling there is contraction so resolidification of materials that leads to contraction of the substratum basis of the theory this theory is based on the presence of radioactive elements of the rocks of the earth according to him there are in continents Later materials are there with a density of about 2.67 and oceanic atom both is it is in continents. So in continents there are lighter lighter materials with less density of and the density is about 2.67. Whereas in oceanic beds there are heavier materials with density of 3. Crust is made up of Cl. So this Cl is a less dense material. So under oceanic crust, Cl is not found. There is the sema is found. So substratum is um, made up of sema. Radioactive elements in the earth. So no uniform distribution of, of these radioactive elements in the earth. And sialic rocks has more radioactive elements than the sema. So which means the crust has more radioactive elements than the substratum. Rate of heat production is small. So the rate of heat production is small where the, because the radiocialic elements which are the crust, the crust constantly loses heat through conduction. conduction. So because of the radi conduction and radiation, the heat production which is there in the crust are constantly lost. But whereas SEMA, at SEMA the radi heat production is less but there is accumulation of heat and because of that it gives result and this is more so because of this heat accumulation so the heat production the which the accumulated heat product produces melting of causes the melting of the rocks which are there in the substratum so mechanism of this theory so he says that crust which is uh, which is made up of cl and he says that it is up to 30 kilometer whereas he says that it is at up to up, at the depth of 30 kilometers the temperature is around 1050 degrees Celsius with heat loss and whereas in oceanic crust at depth heat is more and the heat also is lost no heat transfer from SEMA to CL so in substratum the heat transfer is not there from SEMA to CL heat is more as the depth increases upper layer with 1050 degrees Celsius whereas in lower layer of the substratum it is around 1150 degrees celsius that's how he propounds in his theory so he postulated these facts about this theory to explain about the mechanism of this theory and melting point is around 1150 degrees celsius so she says that the crust is about only 30 kilometers and with 1050 degrees celsius whereas in the substratum he says that upper layer with 1050 degrees celsius Whereas the lower layer with 1150 degrees Celsius, but this 1150 degrees Celsius is enough to melt the rocks in the substratum. Even at 1150 degrees Celsius, the substratum remains solid state until it gains latent heat of fusion. So even at the 1050 degrees Celsius, the substratum remains solid state, but whereas it has to attain the latent heat of fusion, so what is this latent heat of fusion? This is the amount of heat required to liquefy materials in the substratum. So the heat required, so the accumulated heat is required. So though the temperature is 1150 degrees Celsius, this heat has to accumulate constantly to liquefy, liquefy these materials in the substratum. So it would be available in 
these many years so it would be available so it takes a long duration of time to liquefy the materials in the substratum that's what he propounds so that's what he postul postulates in his theory and these were mathematically calculated by Jolie. and in molten conditions several changes occur in earth's earth earth structure period of trans there are two periods are there the one is period of transgressional sea the other one is period of regressional sea so let's see what's happening in the period of transgressional sea when substratum in the molten condition so the expansion of sea mud due to melting causes increases in the radius of the globe so this is the initial radius of the globe but when the expansion of the material is there the globe's radius is increasing further continental masses are raised related to the center of the globe so the here the continental masses are raised so related to the center of the globe so here the continental masses are raised and density of sea reduces due to melting so as the expansion is there so because of the temperature rise temperature rise the density is falling temperature is increasing because of that expansion is there and density of the rocks is falling and the CR sinks in molten sigma. So what because the density decrease, so the CR which is there in the upper part of the crust, upper part of the crust, whatever CR is there that is constantly sinking in the sigma because it is mold in the molten form. Oceanic water level rises due to sinking of continental CR in the sigma. So because this so this region is sinking here, so that the oceanic water level is rising and that and in the sea and this causes extension of oceanic water over the continental margins so that spread of so here whatever water is there so whatever water is there it is spreading over the continent the process of extension of oceanic waters and their encroachment on continental margins are called transgression of sea so the sea 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 sinked in the sea so that water is spreading here and this encroachment of con water on continental margin is called transgression of sea this results in sedimentation on the submerged continental margins and origin of gf inclines so because of this transgression of sea sedimentation is there and this submergent wherever the submerged continental margins are there here the origins geo inclines are originating but in oceanic bed tensions are produced due to increased radius and circumference of the globe and this tension causes cracks and falls so the oceanic bed there are tensions are produced here the tensions are produced and because of that cracks and falls molten material come up through this falls so because of this fracture is there because through this fracture the molt molten materials comes outside and they have solidified to form islands floating continental masses are affected by tidal force and continent drifts and escape of heat brings this phase to end so finally this because of these forces tidal force in continental drift so the molten material is coming out outside and they are getting solidified and this phase is coming to an end period of regressional sea so in this is a contractionary stage the previous stage in transgressionary stage what we saw was it is an expansionary stage whereas this is a contractionary stage so whatever happened in the previous stage these are coming back so the reach the early it in this stage the they regain the earth regains its earlier position so here resolidification of molten magma due to heat loss in the substratum because of continuous continental drift is there because of the salt molten magma is resolidifying and the regains previous value of density radius and circumference Contraction of oceanic bed causes withdrawal of ocean. So here the ocean, whatever, the expansion of oceanic water, the spread of oceanic water is regaining and it's coming back to the previous position. And this phase is called a regressional sea phase. And these contracting beds compress the geosynclined sediments because of the contraction. Here earlier the geosynclined sediments were formed. So these sediments were formed. This now it is getting contracting. So both the side there is compressional force and it's buckling and folding and this forms mountains. Two parallel phase of mountain buildings. So there is two forces horizontal force and vertical force. And lateral compression buckles and folds the sediments in shallow sea. Compression caused by two contracting ocean beds. So both the side, both the side, the oceanic bed is comp compressed to compressed to form mountains 
whereas the vertical force so which is rising but the vertical force which is vertically acting on this geosynclines and this these are produced during the ridge solidification and raises the whole mountain system because of this vertical force the height of the mountains are further increasing so there he say he names a, a word uh, he uses a word a revolution and that is solid molten and resolidification phase of the substratum so this totally the solid phase and again molten phase again resolidification so the entire cyclic pattern he calls a one cycle this one phase of this substratum as that revolution evaluation of this theory so this theory is evaluated on the basis of radioactive elements radio radioactive elements of the rocks at different thickness or different depth is very little known about this fact and thickness of the crust he says only 30 km thickness of the crust and this also can't be accepted by many scholars and cyclic and regular pattern of this mountain building process also can't be because he says that it is a regular pattern of mountain building process but though there are many periods of mountain building but scientists can't accept a regular concept of this mountain building process and the geosynclines so the geosynclines concept that they are always formed by the submergence of continental margins and the due to the uh, transgression of seas are not accepted by many scientists and resolidification of seema so if we accept the capacity of the radioactive elements the radioactive elements are uh, 